Yo, what, what is happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back once again to another video on the channel. So today, guys, by popular demand, a lot of people have asked me to make a video talking about Bunny, but doing a Bunny video based on what a new player would find helpful. So today we're going to do that. We're going to talk about Bunny, who Bunny is, how to play Bunny, Bunny's basic skill set, Bunny's passive skill set. We're also going to talk about the modules you want to have on Bunny as a beginner. Um, the best synergy with the weapons. And that's it, guys. We're not going to really make this video any more complicated than what it needs to be because Bunny, at first, can appear to be very complicated, but she's not really. She's one of the easiest um, descendants to play in the game. And in my opinion, she's one of the most fun. So let's get on with the rest of the video after a message from my sponsor, which just happens to be me, ladies and gentlemen. So we are giving away on the channel, ladies and gentlemen, a ultimate version of whatever Descendant you want. I prefer Bunny myself, but nonetheless, you can get your hands on whatever ultimate Descendant you want. And there's three things you need to do, guys, to be entered is number one, like the video, number two, subscribe, and number three, leave a love heart in the comments. And what I'll do at the end of the month, I will choose one Lucky winner. There's only one entry per video, guys, and a winner is chosen at the end of July, and you can enter every single video. So if you've already entered this in another video, you can enter again. More entries, the more times you leave love hearts in separate videos. So good luck to you all, and enjoy the rest of the video. So welcome back, guys. So good luck to everybody who's um, going to want to win a um, ultimate descendant. Good luck to you all. So Bunny... We're going to start off by her skills. Well, we're going to start off by her passive skill, which is obviously what drives everything around Bunny. Now, Bunny, obviously, her name is the Speedster. Well, there's a reason for her being called the Speedster, because this is how her kit, uh, her playstyle all synergizes together. So her passive skill um, deals damage to nearby enemies upon landing after a double jump. Now, don't really need to worry too much about that as a new player. It doesn't really matter that much at this stage. And again, I'm going to keep this as basic as possible. So there is going to be a lot of stuff I'm going to miss out for players who have been playing Bunny for a while. This video isn't really going to teach you anything. Maybe when we come to the module part of the video. But anyway, what this passive skill does and what you need to take away from it is Bunny gains electricity. You can see it on the screen there. Bunny gains electricity proportional to the travel distance. So that's the big thing you've got to remember. There's two resources what you need when you're playing with Bunny. Number one's magic power. So in the game, it's called MP. MP will allow you to use one ability, well, certain abilities, but then other abilities, you'll need to have a certain amount of electricity to be able to activate other abilities. So instead of just having magic power as a resource, you're also going to need to have electricity. Again, I know this is going to sound very, very confusing for new players. However, this is something you'll get used to pretty quickly. Um, and again, when we go to the gameplay part of the video towards the end of this video, I'm going to explain what those blue bars are and um, kind of talk you through um, the play style for Bunny. So the passive skill, all you want to take away from it is that Bunny gains electricity in proportion to the travel she's dis sorry to the travel distance and again the important part is here if there is no movement for a certain period you're going to actually lose electricity but with bunny you should not be standing still ever and to be fair you shouldn't even be using bunny in my opinion on any big colossi battles there's better descendants in the game so we're going to go over the active skills now Thrill Bomb is her first ability. Not really going to talk about that, guys, because, to be honest, it's not really important for this video. We're trying to keep this as basic as possible to give you a chance of being able to play Bunny comfortably. Her fourth ability, called Maximum Power, we're not going to talk about that, neither. There's no real need to get into those two abilities at this part of your career. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's not really a career, but you understand what I'm trying to say. So these are the two things that are going to go hand in hand. Speed of light and lightning emission. So earlier I said that Bunny has two resources she needs to consume to actually be able to do her abilities. Now, speed of light. This 
as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, um, you can see where basic info is in green. You've got your cooldown. And then it tells you this one, MP cost. So this has a magic power cost of 12. So what you need to do is make sure that you've got 12 magic power to be able to activate this ability. Now, when you activate this ability, you're going to gain even more electricity while moving because you gain something called speed of light. You actually gain electricity as Bunny, even slowly running, but you gain more when you're actually sprinting in the game, and then you cr gain way more guys when you're using this ability Speed of Light. So ultimately what you want to do is activate Speed of Light, but you're going to want to activate that when you're using Lightning Emission. Now Lightning Emission uses electricity. So obviously you use your magic power for Speed of Light to begin with, so you're going to press C, you're going to press C, on your keyboard, well, I have it bound to C anyway, um, or whatever it is on your controller or, or, or your PC, you're going to use speed of light to gain electricity. Once you've actually gained enough electricity to be able to activate lightning emission, you're going to activate lightning emission. And that is it, guys. You run around, lightning emission deals damage every seven meters you move. You can see it on the right-hand side of the screen. So obviously, the quicker you are running around with Bunny the more damage you're going to be doing. So that is a quick overview of Bunny and her abilities and basically how you should be playing her. Remember, guys, towards the end of this video, we're going to have some gameplay for you just to give you a quick overview on basically everything I've talked about here. So now we've actually gone and talked about Bunny's abilities. Well, two of Bunny's abilities and a passive because, again, this is aimed towards new players people who are picking Bunny up for the first time. We're going to talk about how you should set up with Bunny. So obviously Bunny deals electric damage. You can see it there, electric attribute. Depending on what descendant you're playing, you'll have a different icon there, which will tell you um, you know, what you need to you know, prioritize on Bunny. So Bunny deals electric damage. So you're going to want to look at, well, what reactor am I going to want to have? So you're going to get various drops throughout your time um, playing the game. Most of them you're not even going to be using. However, Bunny will obviously do more damage when she has a reactor what is geared towards electric damage. So you can see the reactor there has little electric symbols on it, which is great for us. And then it has other symbols, which again, we're not going to worry too much about, you know, end game builds, which this is an end game um, reactor we're looking at here. The reactors have all different kinds of conditions. So this one has a thunder cage mounting, which the optimization condition for ultimate weapons are always, um, sorry, the ultimate reactors are always linked to an ultimate weapon mounting. So this one I've got thunder cage, which synergizes brilliantly. This is basically, you know, the end game reactor you're going to want to have. The reason I say that is because Number one, we're getting the extra 160% skill power for having a Thunder Gauge um, equipped. You don't actually have to have that weapon in your primary slot. It can be in slot one, two, or three. So you're going to get an extra 160% bonus on your skill power. The skill power numbers are obviously at the top. However, then it breaks it down further to each particular ability. You can see there I've got one ability, Q, C, V, and Z. Now, I was talking about CMV earlier, saying that they're the um, abilities you're going to want to prioritize. So, therefore, I have prioritized on here, making sure that we have an electric skill ratio boost, which, again, we've got that of point 0.2. And then we've also got singular skill power boost because we're prioritizing the C and V on this build. So, that is ultimately what you're going to want to have. Um, but, again, at your stage of the game, you're just going to want to look for a reactor with the lightning symbols on, which signify electric. That is all you're going to want to do. You're not really going to need to go into this level of detail. To be fair, guys, I shouldn't have gone into this level of detail. I'm kind of getting a bit carried away. And then the external components, you're not really going to need an endgame set like I've got here. You're obviously just going to select whichever ones um, suit your character. And again, there's nothing really specific you need here. 
um, especially when you're a new player. Just put on whatever you want. Normally, if I had my pick, I would have defensive stats on here, where you can see that's got DEF for defense, and then I'd also want ones with HP on. But again, I've not got the end game perfect roles for those as of yet. So ultimately, guys, to take away from this part of the video, you just want to have a reactor with the lightning symbol on, as you can see there. That is all you're looking at at this point of your journey with Bunny on The Last Descendant. Next thing we're going to talk about is the weapons, when I can actually press the right button, bear with me. Um, so, again, a lot of this is, um, it can be subjective, because we're already doing enough electric damage anyway, but when you get to end game build, like I've said a moment ago, if you're a reactor, you're going to need to have certain weapons to complement your reactors. However, at your stage of the game, just play with what you find fun, experience the game for what you can. Ultimately, there's two weapons what stand out in the game. Number one, the Thunder Cage. This is an ultimate SMG. You get this through playing the game anyway, and it's a brilliant weapon. There's no real need at this part of the game to actually use any other weapon apart from the Thunder Cage. And then the second weapon, which is called the Tamer. The Tamer is great for boss fights, for the Colossi battles. It's really, really good. They're the kind of two weapons you need. Tamer for big single target damage. And then the Thunder Cage is a really, really good gun. We don't really need to talk more about that. There is modules you can put on the weapons. A lot of these are pretty much self-explanatory. Which, again, this is going to be a learning curve for you as you go along. But ultimately, you're going to want to have on modules which have as much firearm ATK as possible. You don't really want to worry about the recoil. You're going to want to have on... Look, see there, I've got plus 32% ATK, which stands for basically attack damage. That'll put your DPS value up, which is your damage per second. So action and reaction, rifling enforcement. I have on rounds per magazine, but again, this is not even end game build for me, guys. But ultimately, you're just going to want to have as much firearm ATK. Again, we could get more complicated when we're talking about modules, but... This is a beginner's video. There's no point in me talking about anything other than the basics. So as you can see there, guys, the applied values there, I've got firearm attack value at plus 93%. That's kind of what I want in my build. Crit damage of 56% is great. But again, a lot of people make the mistake thinking, oh, yeah, I've got 56% crit damage. You haven't. All that's doing is giving you 56% extra chance of critical damage on top of the base value for this. So if we have a look at this weapon here, firearm critical hit rate is now at 25%. So that would have been much lower before because to get to 25%, we've actually had to give the firearm um, crit hit damage a buff already of 56%. You kind of understand what I'm trying to say here. So, so, sorry, not the damage, the hit rate, beg my pardon, but there's lots to take in from this game. I'm trying to keep it as straightforward as possible because I don't want to confuse anybody more than necessary because again there's a lot of systems in this game a lot of things you've got to learn and to begin with if you're picking up a new character I've seen a lot of videos on the internet they're not really beginner friendly um, on YouTube my videos aren't beginner friendly but this one I'm trying to keep as friendly as possible so the descendant modules guys which again this is pretty important especially when you're playing a new character because you're going to kind of want to put on what you can again this is not an end game module thing here and um, we've already got the max capacity up of 20 so if you're thinking why has this guy got 77 yeah number one my character is not at level 40 yet i'll actually get a few more module capacities as i level up um i've also only got that on a 10 roll i can actually well to be fair i could actually change that socket type and get a five extra points there again i'm not going to go into that too much detail it's end game it's stuff you don't need to worry about yet so, the modules for Bunny. Bunny is a glass cannon. There's no real need to play Bunny as a tank. Most of the time on this game, you're not going to be doing things solo. Even if you are playing solo, people are going to join you. So, don't worry about dying on Bunny. Dying doesn't really hurt you that much unless you're playing the uh, Colossi battles. I wouldn't worry about dying too much. So, the modules. You have a skill module, which... We're not really going to talk about that. We're not really even going to talk about the sub power because, again, you don't need to worry about that at this part of your beginner stage. What you do need to worry about is, well, what 
of the good mods for Bunny. So Nimble Fingers is probably the number one mod you're going to want to have to use on Bunny. Most of these you'll just get through playing the campaign anyway. Um, if you do miss any guys, um, there is a great feature on this game. You can pretty much find out where anything drops, which we'll talk about that later. So Nimble Fingers, you're going to want to max this up as quick as possible because it gives you a skill cooldown of 25%. So you're going to be able to use your um, abilities more often. Skill Expansion, now this is a great one for Bunny just because it your pulse as you move every 7 meters, as we've already talked about, which is this ability, Lightning Emission, that's going to make it pulse a lot further. So you can see the range there under Lightning Emission. So the standard range of this is 7 meters. I'm currently getting it so it radiates a, a radius of 13 Point four meters so we've almost doubled it guys which again if you're playing as bunny this is the way to go power increase which is skill power that's a no-brainer um singular specialist which again because we're using you know singular abilities more so than the fusion abilities on bunny we're gonna want to prioritize singular damage because 95 percent well 99 percent of my damage with bunny is actually through these two abilities. I don't even shoot things with Bunny. You know, I could just play the game with no weapons. It wouldn't really um, mean anything to me. So that's kind of like the 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 mods you want to 100% um, take. I take Agony as well, just because it gives you a bit of max um, magic power, but it also gives you a nice juicy 38% um, bonus on your defensive stats, which is great. We could go more into detail about defense and all that, those kind of things. But again, I don't want to confuse people too much. This is a beginner video. The green numbers there, guys, we don't want to confuse you with those yet. Um, however, once you get used to playing Bunny, once you get used to the first descendant, that is something what is very important um, in the game. If you are new, you could probably put on increased HP because it would give you an extra 218% um, maximum health. Shields are broken in this game. You want to avoid putting any of your modules into shields at this moment in time. Um, so if you are going to want to have a more stable build where you're not going to die every two seconds, um, especially because you're new, I would actually recommend using increased um, health just because you're going to survive a bit better. But once you get used to Bunny, once you find yourself not dying that much, not really taking much damage, you can easily swap that out and just put something in a bit more fun. Um, HP Collector is a great mod. This isn't one you'll normally run into. It's got a very rare drop rate of around 5%. However, this is probably one of the best sustain mods. It's not actually a sustain mod, but it kind of works like one. So this reads, when defeating an enemy, you instantly recover 9% of your max HP. Now, I've leveled this up to a point where it's got a cooldown of 5 seconds. When you first pick this up, it it's actually got a cooldown of 9 seconds. You can get it all the way down to 2 seconds. However, that doesn't... It's, it's, it's kind of a bit of overkill. You don't want to spend your module capacity um, on that. So, again, great one here. And just to show people how this game works. So, if you're looking for a certain module, if you're looking for a certain reactor, and you're thinking, well, where am I supposed to get that from? I've got no idea um, where to get that item from. Well... If you're looking for a reactor, you can actually come on here and think, right, okay, um, I want to go after a reactor. To be fair, guys, I'm not going to tell you this because this is once you've already completed the game and you're playing on hard mode. This isn't really something for a beginner, so we're going to look at this method. So you can bring up your map um, by pressing G um, on PC. Not sure what it is on console, but anyway, bring this map screen up. You can go on to the access info panel here. You want to click on that. And on here, you can find anything in the game and where it drops. So I was just talking about HP Collector a moment ago. So that's what we're going to look at right now. So HP Collector is a module. You're going to click on that. And then you're going to just, you can type it in here or you can filter it accordingly. So we already know what the name is. So it's called HP Collector. So I've typed in HP. There it goes. It's like, right, okay. Um, well, you may be thinking, well, okay, that doesn't tell us where it is. Well, 
All you need to do is click on it and then press F, which you can see down below. It says acquisition info. Press F on there. And this is all the places where you can get this mod from. There's loads of them, guys. Absolutely loads of them. So let's have a look at, I don't know, the one where I got it from, which is um, a normal mission. So it's on normal difficulty. It's in Vespers and it's frontline base. So you click on here, it will actually show you where you need to go to actually get this um, module. So as you can see there, it's got an acquisition chance of 2%. Yes, guys, it's only 2%. This mission takes around, what, two minutes to do? I know it says five on there, but this is where I did it. I was very, very lucky. I actually got HP Collector on my fifth attempt, so the odds was in my favor. So you can pretty much do what I've just shown you there, guys, for absolutely anything um, in the game. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to quickly go to one of my farming locations and um, we're going to actually show you how to play Bunny. Um, again, there's some great farming locations on the game. But, again, as a beginner, you don't really need to know that yet. This, as I've said throughout, is aimed towards newer Bunny players. People who are just picking Bunny up for the first time. They don't really understand you know, what the hell is going on. So, guys, at the bottom of the screen, you can see we've got two. Well, we've got one blue bar at the moment. That blue bar you can see there, the top blue bar, is our magic power. When I use my C ability in a moment, which we've talked about, to make Bunny run faster. So as you can see there, it's building the bottom bar up as we're just doing a default sprint. Now, it, sorry, we're doing our default forward motion. We're not even sprinting. This is just the normal movement in the game. And it's going up slightly. Now, if we press the shift button, or whatever it's going to be on um, console... The bar will start to go up a tiny bit quicker now because we're sprinting. We're actually sprinting. We're not just running. We're sprinting. So if you stop moving for a second, it, it does actually take a moment or two. So look, if you start moving, sorry, stop moving. Oh, look, I can't use my Q. I can't use my V and I can't use my Z. Well, that's because you've got no electricity built up. So you've got to move. You've got to fill that bottom bar to get electric to be able to make you use your abilities. And trust me, guys, you'll never normally have a problem with your electric. Normally, you'll just run out of um, MP before you run out of electric. So what we were talking about earlier with um, her skill abilities is that to start off, you're going to want to use your C ability. So look how quick my blue bar is going up now. However, while you've got your sprint up, it does drain your um, magic power bar. But once that comes to an end, you just don't move as fast. However, the electric bar is full now. So what am I going to do? I'm going to activate my V. And as you can see there, it's pulsating all around me. And because of the build I've actually got here, guys, the duration of this skill actually lasts longer than the um, cooldown. So ultimately, I'm going to be able to do this because of how I've built Bunny I'm going to be able to do this 24-7. So look, we can just run around. Oh look, the ability's finished. But oh look, it's off cooldown already because we've done this in such a manner, our body build, to be able to do this all the time. And again, remember how Bunny's ability works? This pulsates every 7 meters travelled. So again... The ability is still going. And no look, we can activate it again. Because of the way how we've got the skill length is actually longer than the cooldown. So we can do this forever. So, as we were talking about, it pulsates every 7 meters of distance travelled. I'll wait until it cools down again. Until we reactivate it. So the best thing to do on this is you're going to want to Use your, use your um, C and then do it because look how much quicker it pulsates now. Because we're moving much quicker because of our C ability. So look, guys. Look look how quick we can go here. And again, we're picking up MP boxes, what enemies drop on the floor, so we can just sprint forever and run around forever. And then once you get better at the game and you start 
you know, getting used to things, you can jump up in the air because that counts towards distance travelled as well. And that's it, really, guys. Um, I think I've covered pretty much all the basics for you when you're starting your journey with um, Bunny. Again, there is a lot more advanced stuff out there once you know the basics. So, again, thank you, everybody, for watching. If you've watched right until the end, thank you um, for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it. And, yeah, make sure um, to leave a love heart in the comments to make sure you're entered in to the um, Ultimate Descendant giveaway. All right. Love you all. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching right until the end. Goodbye for now and have a lot of fun playing Bunny because she's definitely the best Descendant in this game. All right. Love you all. Take it easy. Goodbye for now. Have a great weekend, my friends.